three, two, and a one. Hello and welcome to episode 168 of the Naked Tech Podcast. It's a show that gives you everything you need to know about consumer tech, the internet, and all about red herrings. I'm your friend Jeff Kim. My name is Calvin Lee and you can now buy an episode of the Naked Tech Podcast for one ETH. One ETH, that's still... That's, that's not enough. <laughs> that's no, one ETH. no, no, no. Wow. Well, are, are we at, what, a uh, thousand? What is the ETH thousand? price now? Yeah, let me just have a quick l- oh. look. Let's, uh, shall we, shall we? We'll kick off the episode. Now, ETH is the official term, I believe, but I think uh, we're talking about an ether. That's right. So, at the moment, it is at 1,725 US dollars. Cheap, man. Cheap. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Episode 1 or episode beta 0.1. Yeah, and uh, based on the first 30 seconds of this episode, we've just described NFTs. We're done now. <laughs> done. Thank you. See, see you in see two you weeks. Later. Bye. Ah, uh, right. What a what a week. What a, what a time to be alive, actually, Kelvin. Yeah, who would have thought? Hey, well, what, what what what's happening right now? So, um, if you've been living, you know what's really funny? You if you've been living on a rock, mm. you've probably mm. not heard about Mrs. Musk, aka Grimes, uh, making a lot of money, and a lot of people throwing around a term called NFT. Uh, non functional testing. <laughs> Uh, and, and those stand for non-fungible tokens. Uh, when I first heard the term, I thought it was a funny word, too. Uh, so we thought we'd dedicate today's episode to that because it's not just Grimes. It's PewDiePie. It's the NBA. It's all these different artists. Everyone's talking about it. I have a clip. You have a clip. Hit it. As, a, as an example, here we go. Quick one. So the Kings of Leon are set to be the first rock band to release their album via an NFT. So they're doing this in kind of a three-tiered system. They have three tokens. I'm going to let you know what those tokens are offering now. All right. So we have a special (laughs) album package, an offering with live show perks, and then a third with the uh, exclusive audio visual art. Art, yes. Everything is art. That's right. And I'm going to sing every time I say something like what she did. Um, so uh, where should we start, Jeff? Where should we start? Should we... I know you have a great clip to explain NFTs. Where do you want to start? Mm. Let's, um, let's prefix, pre- preface, preface this to say... Because I've, I've heard a lot of podcasts in the last couple of weeks, probably the last week especially. And a lot of... So-called tech experts trying to explain NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Uh, I think they've done a pretty bad job. I think we're going to probably not go down the very basic level because I think, yes, everyone gets it. We're attributing some sort of value into digital assets. Uh, Somehow we're using a blockchain, Ethereum in particular. Um, But I think, yes, you're right. Marquez, I think his podcast did did the best job out of everything. And funnily enough, we both clipped the same thing. Um, So he's very articulate about what fungibility is. So let's start with that because this is a non-fungible thing. Uh, So we're going to start with that very quickly. Fungibility is the ability for a good or asset to be interchanged with other goods or assets. So if something is non-fungible, it cannot be interchangeable. It's unique. It's its own. It's the original. Yeah. Now, this took me a little while to trust get what that was the difference between something that is fungible versus not and it's it's really about uniqueness so if we're talking about ethereum or uh, bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies where one part of or one fraction of the thing of the coin is is the same as the thing that's the same value that makes sense so 0.1 bitcoin will always be the same thing as another 0.1 bitcoins Uh, whereas uh when we're tokenizing things uh whether it's digital or physical and we'll get on to how you've sort of delved in into uh physical things uh, tokenizing physical objects in the past but with like really this uh it's, it's really taken off in the last couple of weeks in terms of digital objects so that that's what the difference is got any more to say yeah about that? so i think yeah, i'm wearing a very special shirt today i went to defcon in uh 2019 which is the ethereum developers conference and i think we should time travel a little bit back to 2019 um where i used to work for a company called consensus that was started by a man called... oh, 
too early. No, no, it's okay. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, we okay. started a man called by Joseph Lubin and Joseph Lubin and uh, another gentleman called Vitalik started Ethereum. Um, stop me if I get too carried away. Now, when I first came across Ethereum, um, I had to do a lot of reading, a lot of learning. I'm not technically a very technical person. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I learned about Ethereum. Uh, what the, the, the key thing that's different between Ethereum and blockchain is Ethereum was based off the, the concept of smart contracts. So you build something into the, into the actual token and it does certain attributes that you want it to do. So if, you, uh, if you're like me and you used to hang out at ethereum.org, there are some rules uh, that make NFTs work. Just like you said, each token is unique. Uh, and they're not interchangeable with any other tokens. So one ETH is exactly one ETH. Um, that's it. Um, every token has an owner, one owner, and the information is easily verifiable anywhere. Um, all these tokens live on Ethereum, and you can buy and sell them on any NFT market. Uh, so in basic terms, if you can easily prove you own it, it can't be manipulated in any way, and you can sell it. So what's really cool about NFTs is you can actually see a history of all the buyers and sellers. So Jeff, if I were to sell you my car at the moment, you have no way of telling who the previous owners were. With NFTs, you can. Um, an article I wrote in 2019, we looked, I looked at all the different ways you could tokenize assets. So they've done it with like apartments. So for example, if you can't afford an apartment, you can split it up into a thousand pieces and sell each piece for what you think that entire asset is worth. You can sell private companies, you can sell infrastructure, but the coolest case study um, was a company called Blockpunk. So Blockpunk, um, you can buy collectibles, like toys based off animes and, and manga, and you can on sell that, and these things are finite. So you can actually say that Kelvin was the first owner of this particular collectible, and you know it's worth. Whereas if I were to sell it on Facebook Marketplace and it wasn't identifiable anyway, you have no idea how many hands it's come across. You have no idea who the original owner is. So that was sort of the general concept of uh, tokenization and physical items. I think what's really taken off in the last couple of years is digital assets, which is what we're seeing now. Yeah, so collectibles is probably the right place to kind of start this with. So I think I came across this uh, probably a week ago when... Uh, it made the news a little bit when uh, a, I guess, a video, like a short clip of LeBron James doing this massive dunk in one of the finals that he won a couple of years ago, um, that sold for half a million um, as part of the the Top Shots Top Shots collectible. So I think we're all familiar with basketball trading cards. So this is a digital version of that. We, you know, we've seen a little bit with you know Pokemon and. Other things, I think I used to collect uh, Rick and Morty stickers on, on an app for, for a little while. Um, there was a you know economy being formed that was, um, wasn't was using NFTs, I don't believe, at the time. But like the concept was there. And I think the idea of collecting these little digital things has been around, but it's just sort of come to light just this week, especially with people like Grimes and Logan Paul making a million dollars or millions of dollars in like 20 seconds or something similar to that. Um, so, you know, th there's a lot of hype, obviously. So there's going to be this like sharp rise probably for the next couple of months. Um, you know, the bubble will likely burst at some, some point. Um, now I do have, maybe we should sort of time travel back to the present if that's okay. Yeah, let's go uh, back before we get a headache. Let's go. A bit quicker this time. Um, Yes, uh, I, I do have a part two of Marquez's uh, explanation of uh, what fungibility and non-fungible things are. Um, I thought this was a pretty good one too. The fact that it's built on blockchain means that it, it, was, it would be hard to understand if you were just buying and selling a digital file. What you're really doing is buying and selling this idea of the original digital file and blockchain, the same way it's worked for Bitcoin, the same way it's worked for Ethereum, keeps a log of the owner of that original file based on the token system. So there's a history of ownership, there is only one original, and there is a limited quantity that cannot be multiplied. Right, so that's pretty much sums up what uh, you just said. Um, 
So well done, Kelvin. <laughs> you you beat Marquez there. <laughs> if only, if only. Now the the guest that he had on uh, this week's uh, podcast was was really good as well, and he did sound Australian. I can't confirm or deny that he is. Could be Kiwi, maybe. Uh, but his name is Justin Mola Mala. Let's go with Mala. Um, he is a digital artist. He is a uh, co-founder or he leads the Deviant Art site, which has been around for ages. I remember going there, like back in the MySpace days, mm, right? Definitely. <laughs> and I think it was big on Tumblr as well. So those two things have uh, sort of I don't know. Tumblr's still around, but it's pretty much a porn site I mean, now. Seventy percent um, of it, I think, the last time they sold it. Yeah, uh, Yahoo, right? Yeah, pretty um, much. Now, now he's going to um, explain sort of the the art world stuff. So, uh, you know, the, sort of coming back to what I've been talking about in the last couple of weeks, which is co- coin, coin, uh, clubhouse. I was going to say coin house for clubhouse. Um, this this is just like the conversations on clubhouse. I could probably like turn it on right now. I won't do it. And there'll be some, you know, artists talking about, you know, the strategies, how, how to make money really quickly, that sort of stuff. So I sort of got to hear this on Clubhouse as well. Um, but this is Justin Muller on Marquez's uh, podcast, The Waveform on, I guess, uh, this is really about digital IP having its moment. I do think that there's a lot of IP out there that has been undervalued for a long time and a lot of creativity that has been severely undervalued for a long time that is starting to get its moment. Uh, and is starting to become properly valued. Yeah, so I think, you know, there's the, like, in, in the recent days when things are being sold for millions of dollars, but also at the same time, there's there's a lot of really great digital artwork that has that has had zero value, or almost zero value, right? Um, so we've got, got situations like uh, the Nyan Cat, which is like silly animated GIF of a cat on a flying toaster with rainbow trails. Is that a... Accurate description of Nyan Cat. There's no other way. Sold for 308, 308 uh, this week. Uh, sorry, last week, I think. And um, yeah, that's on a site called foundation.app. I, I think, I and think, yeah, I mean, we've all seen I it. I think you've described it quite well. I would have described it as rainbow farts, but you know, uh, everyone sees the different things. Farts, trails, same <laughs> thing, really. What, what, what are comets with, with the trail? It's, it's comets farting ice. Um, someone take that ISO, please. Uh, now, just because I, I really love that episode, I've got another clip um, just quickly. This actually, this one's a bit, bit longer, but he's um, uh, actually, you know what? I think you've covered it. Uh, so I'll, I'll just try to summarize it quickly. Um, it's really the token is more, think of it like a deed or a contract, a smart contract, if you like. So, you know, even when you're buying a house, like, you're, like are you paying for the house? Or are you paying for the contract for the house? That, that's how we see it, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's worth talking about the art as well. I think it's really tough for artists because once you've sold mm. a piece of art, it's done. You'll never make any more money from it, right? It's already exchanged hands. But this is where, mm-hmm. you know, this is a good article, you know, uh, my ex-colleagues wrote up about the, the NFT art place is now merging with decentralized finance. So here's a really good example. If, for example, um, Kanye West sold a pair of his shoes um, via NFT, if it was, if, if some of those tokens were to get sold again, they get money out of it because they get they have a share of those tokens. So, as an artist, mm-hmm. you know this is amazing. You, your your the value of your art kind of lives forever, you know, because it is you are part of that piece of art. And if someone sells a share for a particular premium, you get some of that back. You get some of that resale value up. Um, and based on this article, um, at the moment, the NFT space at the end of 2020, so that was before this crazy explosion happened, was 52 million. Um, and there's a lot of cool marketplaces where you can buy great art like this, for example, called Block 21. Mm-hmm. And all these random art pieces that you can buy. And to give you a rough idea, like these are all the artists um, at the moment, um, on CryptoPunks, which is a marketplace, so the number the number one seller, uh, number one uh, artist there, you know, has 189 ETH, uh, which is 138 thousand dollars. Like this is great. Like this is actually going to create a, a whole new generation of artists who can sell mm-hmm. their art and make money from it and get some of the resale value back. And I think that's great for the art world. 
Um, I guess the criticism uh, or the counterpoint for this is, you know, these meme like things. Um, I've seen like I don't know, uh, like a nine second video of a, like a Trump like in a punk uh, in a park um, that got sold for like a million dollars by a guy called Beeple. Um, you know, like is it actually art? I guess th- th- this kind of goes into the philosophical side of what what is art as well. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I just feel like there's going to be some point where like it will balance out and totally, you know, everything yeah. blockchain crypto related will always start with the hype train and then you'll get what they used to mm-hmm. call the crypto winter where everyone gets, you know, spends a crazy amount of money buying all the stuff and then naturally inflation kicks in and then it's worth nothing and then it'll calm down and then people will start using the technology that it was intended for. Yeah. Um, like, you know, there's mm. a whole craze here called hash masks where it's art about masks and they're selling you know uh for about ten thousand ETH um in total um and it, yeah i think it will the hype train is happening right now but it will ease out like you said mm-hmm. and then you know it'll have its uses i feel like uh yeah it, it is a bit of a wild wild west at the moment it's a bit like when the App Store opened up for the first time back in 2009 or 2010, maybe, like where, you know, apps like the the leading app was the farting app, right? Speaking of farts. <laughs> um, so, like, what is an app? What is art? I think we're at that stage. Now, um, the opportunity is there, right? Because it is the wild, wild west. If you're smart enough, opportunistic enough, you're going to find some way to make a lot of money. And I think that's that's where a lot of artists are trying to like really get into the technical side of things as well as the artistic side of things. You're going to need some sort of brokerage capacity. Like, I don't know, like people that aren't artists, they're, they're get, trying to get into that hype train too and make some money. Now, this, this could be one way. So I've got um, Sarah Lane from uh, DTNS talking about uh, a potential app where... It could be as easy as like uploading a photo to Instagram. Potentially impressive, a service called Sing has launched on iOS, letting users easily create NFTs with existing pro- uh, photos, recorded audio, documents, or other data, non-fungible tokens. It's the hot new phrase. The service supports Wave, MP3, MIDI, PTX, PTF, and M4A music files, and images in JPEG, bitmap, or TIFF formats. So when you sign up, the service automatically creates an Ethereum wallet. When you upload content, it becomes an ERC-721 token in that wallet, and then you can share it with other users. Now, it's Sing with a exclamation mark instead of the I in the Sing. Yeah. But um, and it's not available in the, the Australia App Store. Here's the funny I've thing. Had a look. Yeah, it's, it's, I love it. Like, I never understand why crypto companies have to do this. They always have to spell it funny. Um, like, you know, when, you, when you're told to hold on to a particular crypto coin, it has to be H-O-D-L. Um, uh, it's these guys. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so they haven't quite, I think, I think this is an example of someone trying to get into the market. Um, you can't, so once, once you've created the NFT on the Ether, you can't actually sell it right now. So that's coming. There's going to be some fee, I suppose, when that comes. Um, but interesting, like, um, yeah, like think about all those apps where you can just very quickly, quickly start a meme. If that starts going viral, then this is how you're going to cash in. Yeah. And, it, and it's just like we said, like, you know, I'm looking at the website right now that you can see on our Twitch screen. Um, you can split ownership on Sing. You can, you know, record your ideas in app. Um, it's backed by blockchain, so it's secure. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have much more information than that, which is quite concerning. Um, mm. But it basically takes the the, the techno funk out of the idea of NFTs uh, because it's something you're gonna have to wrap, wrap your head around. You don't get cash, so you're gonna need a wallet. You're gonna need something like MetaMask to store your Ethereum coins. Um, so it's it's interesting, um, and I, I wanted to stay around. I wanted to challenge, you know pre-existing concepts of finance and how you sell art and things like that. I think it keeps the banks on us. I think it keeps the art world on us. And I love these ideas. Hmm. So I feel like uh, this is going to be 2021 for us, Kelvin. <laughs> I think uh, this is going to go on. Uh, it's a bit of, bit of a golden age. Um, I guess like what I'm trying to get my head around is like, what is the 
one platform. Mm. You know, what is the app store for this? So, you know, like companies like Sing are starting. Um, I think with foundation.app is is probably the the most well known for digital artists at the moment. Um, I think uh, Sarah Sarah Lane did say Sing is more for uh, hey, it's it's in the name, it's more for music than uh digital art. So yeah, um, you know, Kings of Leon have already gone the NFT route. Grimes, I think she did more art stuff, but I'm sure she'll get into music. Yeah. So very interesting times. Yeah, and I think these apps have to be careful as well. The, the, the most basic principle of Ethereum is it was meant to be decentralized. So the moment you start having these big apps, you know, where they try to centralize the control is when it starts to break down because the very essence of it is if you you can actually spend the time to learn how to actually build your own NFT, etc. Um, and it shouldn't be too hard based on how Ethereum is trying to build itself out as that very accessible technology. So, you know, you can do this on your own. You don't need apps like Sing. It just makes it super simple. So all mm. you need is a marketplace, really, to be able to sell these things that facilitate that sale. Um, but you could very much do this on your own. So you don't need an app like Sing. It just makes it super easy. Yes. Um, and once you do find out, you could do things like selling the first episode of your podcast, perhaps. Um, now, Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, or well, one of the founders, um, he's, he's trying to sell his first tweet. Oh. Wasn't it something like... Um, I'm writing a tweet or something like that. But yeah, I'm going to put that in the hype train uh, basket. Uh, well, or, or yeah. does it, does it have a lot of history? So the other question is it's a historic tweet. Yeah. I, I, it's I, the very first tweet. Yeah. I think, you know, like, so what do you do? So if, if, a, if a museum wanted to show that tweet, they pay for it. Like they buy a part of it. I'm still trying to understand the whole, digital asset side of tokenization i'm still trying to wrap mm. my head around it if he owns and sells that well tweet, okay what how does that i think matter one one statement kind of you know did it for me and it was in that sort of clip that i didn't play but really what justin was saying the token is not the file the token is the contract so you, like the file the actual tweet you can you can take a photo of it you could copy and paste it into a Word doc. You know, it, it's it's a, just a bunch of letters and characters, right? Um, it, even if it's a, even if it's more like an animated GIF or even the LeBron James dunk, that's still something you could copy and paste the actual mm -hmm. file. It's a .mov file or AVI, whatever it is. But on the token is not that. That's right. The token is linked to that, to say, and and it gives ownership. Yeah. So the token is not the file. If if you go away with anything from this episode listeners uh i think that's what i want you to yeah uh, go with and tell your friends tell your colleagues and tell them you heard it from the naked tech podcast because <laughs> this is what we're about education totally and i think i think it makes a lot of sense and then you know in a couple of years we'll probably get copyright nightmares that come you know like if someone makes a copy of something mm -hmm. who does it belong to and how, do they, how are they going to license those royalties etc i think that's going to be a whole different episode that we'll need to cover in a couple of years. Mm. Now, I did mention Jack Dorsey, not because of the actual tweet that he wants to sell. It's really a bit of a segue because Square is one of his companies, mm -hmm. his second company, probably his first company now, uh, bought Tidal, the streaming music streaming service. Uh? 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 Jay-Z is going to be on the board of Square. <laughs> You see, uh, finance, decentralized, yes. Jack Dorsey, understanding. He's also got yeah. an incubator that's based yeah. on blockchain, if I remember correctly. So he's on to it. Mm. I just want to play a very quick thing from Nilay Patel. Just uh, I think he's thinking what we're all thinking. I, I know Jack is deep into Bitcoin. Square is deep into Bitcoin. Is there a connection here? Or is that just I'm taking the two big news topics and mashing them together? Yeah. No. I think I think that's what's happened. It's like, yeah, what's the most topical thing we can do right now? What's the most topical play we can do? Board, square board. Yeah. Let's buy time. There is not one Silicon Valley company that doesn't have their feet into blockchain. Facebook has tried it, is still trying. <laughs> um, you know, Apple definitely has something in the works. I mean, they have the Apple credit card. There's nothing to stop them from being able to sell apple items using some sort of apple coin it'd be silly for them not to um mm. so it's coming 
Well, there's potentially one big company, uh, part of the Fang. I mean, not not officially. There's no M in the Fang. M Fang. Uh, Microsoft. They've been a little bit quiet on this front, but they're talking about other things. Should we get onto that? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we'll be we'll be quick with this one. But uh, they did have a Ignite keynote. Uh, I think it's a couple of days of. Uh, what Microsoft has, has been up to really was about Microsoft Teams. And I think we spoke about it a, couple, a few times this year, but Teams is their headline product now. Yeah, very much. Like everyone's heard of Teams, right? I mean, it's, it's synonymous to using Microsoft Word now. Absolutely. So, um, so I didn't know too much about this until you sent me a uh, a video, I think, about the, the keynote. Uh, our favorite presenter of all time, Alex Kipment. He's an alien that created uh, Xbox, uh, what is it, the Connect, but also the HoloLens. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he spoke for a few minutes. Uh, I just, I'm just going to play a bit of the, the intro just to give you a feeling for what this was about because this was all in mixed reality um, with virtual people. I mean, they were kind of forced to do it, but like that kind of works because this is a mixed reality uh, keynote. So uh, listen, listen for all the bubbles. A dreamy dream alone is only a dream. A dream we dream together is called reality. It's all, it's all been a dream. Yeah. It's reality. He's, he, I think you need a quirky guy like that to be your moonshot guy. I would de like, look, is that him? That's him, right? That's Kipman. Yeah. That's him. That's look him. at the guy, man. Like, there, there you know, he's, he's got great yeah. ideas behind that crazy set of hair he's got. Like, it, mm. he, he, he probably, he looks like the kind of guy that works like 18 hours a day, nonstop, trying all these crazy things. Um, what do you think about Mesh? Do you think, I, I think it's worth describing as well. So I think teams, is working really well. It allows people to, you know, collaborate online in real time, etc. But when you want to visually look at something in the 3D space, that's what's missing. And I think that's what Mesh is attempting to do. I think it's kind of beyond that as well. So we've we've been covering, you know, things like Oculus Quest um, and the uh, the conferences that Facebook have been running through that. Um, it's more sort of VR related, but they're getting into AR. Um, however, Facebook and Oculus are very limited in that ecosystem of Oculus products. Um, Software-wise, yes, you can you can uh, use apps from the same store, but like you know, it, it's very much a closed uh, ecosystem. What Mesh is trying to do with uh, Teams and everything is just opening that up. So it's it's kind of like mixed reality. Or reality as a platform on oh, oh god please don't <laughs> use that microsoft uh, please don't copy me there um but yeah like uh, they're wanting to get the developers in and you know have all types of r devices so that's whether it's vr or ar like hololens um or, or the mixed ones like um i don't know what's a mixed reality one hololens is technically yeah, mixed reality HoloLens I suppose. Is technically mixed. yeah so like doesn't matter what type of device you're using, if you can be in a Teams, Microsoft Teams meeting, and this is where it's all headed. Uh, so in 2020, we got very used to, you know, face-to-face, -face, virtual face-to-face -face meetings. Um, I guess the time is kind of rife to get into this more, I don't know, immersive meetings. Um, yeah. Microsoft accelerating Bill Gates vaccines. Oh my God. It's all, it's all, it's all making sense. No, I'm kidding. Um, it, yeah, I think everyone's used to it now. I mean, if you think about you know, less than a year ago, would, you know, most people like microphones are sold out, webcams are sold out. Like everyone is, you know, ramping up the internet connections. Um, we're, we're ready. Like, you know, I think even in Australia, MBN had to, mm -hmm. you know, increase all, all our internet speeds by 15% just to deal with that capacity. So, we're all ready to do more now. Like, what is the next best thing? We're all working from home. We're all trying these new things. We're all trying these new boards and collaboration tools. This is this makes sense for Microsoft. Like, I, I'd be surprised if, you know, I, I think the real sign of intent is like doing something crazy, like closing down Outlook, saying that email is dead. Um, and then let's do everything on Teams. I think that is 
Email is a feature. Yeah, like email is a something. Use it for notifications. You and I have been talking about this for 10 years now. Like email is nothing but a notification system, and that's what it should be. It shouldn't be facilitating work. Yep. Um, I just had a thought there, but um, do you have the Verge article? Because there was a really cool um, thing which highlights what I'm trying to say, which is uh, it's, it's on the Notion notes there, Corbin. Um, <laughs> So I think Tom Warren uh, from The Verge uh, had like a one-on-one. So that's that's the article. If you want to scroll up a bit, there's like a GIF of him showing. There's like a oh, this one? way. Of, there yeah. it is. Yes. So see how see how um, Alex is in the real mm. world, ah, but Tom, he's he's not. the blonde dude, he's sort of become yeah as as the old space, which is a company that Microsoft bought uh, in three years ago. We've we've had our time on old space before, mm-hmm. Kelvin. If you oh, remember, yeah. um, he's come in as a virtual figure into this environment, but it kind of seamlessly works, right? Um, so what what Alex is seeing through his Hololens is not quite right because there's a very narrow field of view, mm-hmm. but like you, you get that concept, right? So this is I feel like this is the missing piece, and I think this is the power of Mesh, really. So your original question of like, what is Mesh? How is it different to all the other platforms? I think this is it. Yeah, you're bringing someone into your physical space, basically. I think I think that's a way to explain it to everyone who's just yeah. listening to us on the podcast and not able to visualize this. Just imagine if you want to listen to this podcast, you put on any virtual reality, mixed reality, AR goggles, and then you'll see me and Jeff sitting right beside you. And talking in your ear, mm. you know what I mean. I, I, and you know, with all that talk that we covered in the last episode about Clubhouse, I feel like that is the next thing. Clubhouse inviting people into a room. What if that room was built in a virtual environment, and you can actually see Kelvin and Jeff talk to you? You can join in, throw things at us, mm. which I'm sure you very much want to do. I mean, there's going to be use cases, right? So, like me personally, like being a little bit serious about it, like I've been going into the office a couple of times a week just to whiteboard with people. Mm. Um, some, most of the time I'm whiteboarding by myself, but <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think like I, I just can't work, you know, sitting in front of a screen and a keyboard like without being able to draw things or like show concepts. And that to me, that's not work, you know, like think, thinking is the work. Um, you know, you, you can, after the fact, you can write down and, you know, capture some of the notes just to, just for, just to bring it up at a later time or whatever it is. But I feel like, um, you know, if, if this, this technology is there, you know, we're not going to say by the end of 2021, everyone will have a headset, but why not? I mean, I think, I think Microsoft might go all in on this, um, because it's, this kind of like, you know, um, spells out the future of work for me. Um, even yeah, maybe the way we record podcasts could be different, you know? Yeah. And you know what? It's really funny. You say that, um, I read an article about Revolut, which is the bank, uh, the Neo bank, they're redesigning all their offices to be 70% meeting rooms because people do exactly what you do, Jeff, you come in, you just want to get two or three people in the room and whiteboard. You're not sit, you're not going there to work, but you can have hot desks. You can take your laptop, work anywhere in the cafe, the park. People are used to that now. Um, so mm. I think this change is coming and I can't believe it took a pandemic to be that, you know, that push, that accelerator we needed. Crazy. Ooh, hang on. Bill Gates, <laughs> Microsoft. Mesh. Mm. What are you saying? Before, I think, I think we, I think we better end it here before, uh, we got tagged yeah. as conspiracy yeah. theorists. Um, Maybe. we hope you had fun today. We definitely did from MF- NFTs to meshing. Um, if you enjoyed the episode, please, please, please tune into the other 167 episodes we have on the website. That's the naked podcast.com. You can also reach out to us on any of the social networks, come and watch the videos on YouTube, join our Twitch show. And that is quite Kelda. out. And let us know what you thought of the video on LinkedIn. Jeff <laughs> out. There's a guy who just messaged us on Twitch going, this is a scam. No one is naked. Let's... No. Hang on, who is that? No, I'm not. I can't even say who's his that? username. It's uh, it's not friendly for uh, for work. But uh, so hang on. So he joined joined into the stream because of the name of the... yeah. Wow. Thinking there was a bit of a uh, you know. Mm, I told you it would work one day. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Niraj. <laughs>
five years later. Yeah, I know. Hey, you know what? This may uh, push us up the Twitch rankings, our first conversation on Twitch. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. No, that was really fun. Funny. It's all happening. I can't stop looking at this yeah. gif about this whale going through that thing he drew. It's it's just strange. Why is it always a whale? I don't know, man. Why is it always a whale? What's wrong with the internet and whales? It's a bit it's a bit phallic. <laughs> um yeah. Alrighty, I'm gonna stop it there. That was, so that was like a one on one interview. Yeah. So he, he got to just speak with Alex one on one. Is that cool? Uh, I, that was I cool. wonder if anyone got do you think the Verge was the only one? I would think so. Oh definitely not. Or, definitely not. Yeah. I haven't seen this anywhere but else. Then, uh, yeah, anyway, okay. I'm gonna stop the stream now. Hang on, so he's so he yeah. Bye Thanks, bye. everybody, and sorry we're not naked.